part one of oedipus rex this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by expatriate in bangor maine oedipus rex or oedipus king of thebes by sophocles translated by gilbert murray eighteen sixty six to nineteen fifty seven part one characters in the play oedipus supposed son of polybus king of corinth now elected king of thebes jocasta queen of thebes widow of laius the late king and now wife to oedipus creon a prince of thebes brother to jocasta teresius an old blind seer priest of zeus a stranger from corinth a shepherd of king laius a messenger from the palace chorus of the elders of thebes a crowd of suppliants men women and children the following do not appear in the play but are frequently mentioned laius the last king of thebes before oedipus cadmus the founder of thebes son of agenor king of sidon polybus and merope king and queen of corinth supposed to be the father and mother of oedipus apollo the god specially presiding over the oracle of delphi and the island delos he is also called phoebus the pure loxias supposed to mean he of the crooked words and lycaeus supposed to mean wolf god he is also the great averter of evil and has names from the cries ea and paean cries for healing or for the frightening away of evil influences Kithiron, a mass of wild mountains southwest of thebes argument while thebes was under the rule of laius and jocasta there appeared a strange and monstrous creature the riddling sphinx the she-wolf of the woven song who in some unexplained way sang riddles of death and slew the people of thebes laius went to ask aid of the oracle of delphi but was slain mysteriously on the road soon afterwards there came to thebes a young prince of corinth oedipus who had left his home and was wandering he faced the sphinx and read her riddle whereupon she flung herself from her rock and died the throne being vacant was offered to oedipus and with it the hand of the queen jocasta some ten or twelve years afterwards a pestilence has fallen on thebes at this point the play begins oedipus king of thebes scene before the palace of oedipus at thebes a crowd of suppliants of all ages are waiting by the altar in front and on the steps of the palace among them the priest of zeus as the palace door opens and oedipus comes out all the suppliants with a cry move towards him in attitudes of prayer holding out their olive branches and then become still again as he speaks oedipus my children fruit of cadmus ancient tree new springing wherefore thus with bended knee press ye upon us laden all with wreaths and suppliant branches and the city breathes heavy with incense heavy with dim prayer and shrieks to affright the slayer children care for this so moves me i have scorned with all message or writing seeing tis i ye call tis i am come world-honoured oedipus old man do thou declare the rest have thus their champion in what mood stand ye so still in dread or sure hope know ye not my will is yours for aid gainst all stern were indeed the heart that felt not for so dire a need priest o oedipus who holdest in thy hand my city thou canst see what ages stand at these thine altars some whose little wings scarce flieth yet and some with long living or burdened priests as i of zeus am priest and chosen youths and wailing hath not ceased of thousands in the market-place and by athena's twofold temples in the dry ash of ismenus's portent breathing shore for all our ship thou seest is weak and sore shaken with storms and no more lighteneth her head above the waves whose trough is death she wasteth in the fruitless buds of earth in parched herds and travail without birth of dying women yea and midst of it 
a burning and a loathly god hath lit sudden and sweeps our land this plague of power till cadmus house grows empty hour by hour and hell's house rich with steam of tears and blood o king not god indeed nor peer to god we deem thee that we kneel before thine hearth children and old men praying but of earth a thing consummate by thy star confessed thou walkest and by converse with the blest who came to thebes so swift and swept away the sphinx's song the tribute of dismay that all were bowed beneath and made us free a stranger thou not knowing more than we nor taught of any man but by god's breath filled thou didst raise our life so the world saith so we say therefore now o lord in chief we come to thee again we lay our grief on thy head if thou find us not some aid perchance thou hast heard gods talking in the shade of night or eke some man to him that knows men say each chance that falls each wind that blows hath life when he seeks counsel up o chief of men and lift thy city from its grief face thine own peril all our land doth hold thee still our saviour for that help of old shall they that tell of thee hereafter tell by him was thebes raised up and after fell nay lift us till we slip no more o oh, let that bird of old that made us fortunate wing back be thou our oedipus again and let thy kingdom be a land of men not emptiness walls towers and ships they all are nothing with no men to keep the wall oedipus my poor poor children surely long ago i have read your trouble stricken well i know ye all are stricken sore yet verily not one so stricken to the heart as i your grief it cometh to each man apart for his own loss none others but this heart for thee and me and all of us doth weep wherefore it is not to one sunk in sleep ye come with waking many tears these days for your sake i have wept and many ways have wandered on the beating wings of thought and finding but one hope that i have sought and followed i have sent minoikeus's son creon my own wife's brother forth alone to apollo's house in delphi there to ask what word what deed of mine what bitter task may save my city and the lapse of days reckoned i can but marvel what delays his journey tis beyond all thought that thus he comes not beyond need but when he does then call me false and traitor if i flee back from whatever task god showeth me priest at point of time thou speakest mark the cheer yonder is that not creon drawing near they all crowd to gaze where creon is approaching in the distance oedipus o lord apollo help and be the star that guides him joyous as his seemings are priest o oh, surely joyous how else should he bear that fruited laurel wreathed about his hair oedipus we soon shall know tis not too far for one clear voice shouting ho oh, brother prince minoikeus's son what message from the god creon from a distance message of joy enter creon i tell thee what is now our worst annoy if the right deed be done shall turn to good the crowd which has been full of excited hope falls to doubt and disappointment oedipus nay but what is the message for my blood runs neither hot nor cold for words like those creon shall i speak now with all these pressing close or pass within to me both ways are fair oedipus speak forth to all the grief that these men bear is more than any fear for mine own death creon i speak then what i heard from god thus saith phoebus our lord and seer in clear command an unclean thing there is hid in our land eating the soil thereof this ye shall cast out and not foster till all help be past oedipus how cast it out what was the evil deed creon hunt the men out from thebes or make them bleed who slew for blood it is that stirs to-day oedipus who was the man they killed doth phoebus say creon o king there was of old king laius in thebes ere thou didst come to pilot us oedipus i know not that i ever saw his face creon 
twas he and loxias now bids us trace and smite the unknown workers of his fall oedipus where in god's earth are they or how withal find the blurred trail of such an ancient stain creon in thebes he said that which men seek amain they find tis things forgotten that go by oedipus and where did laius meet them did he die in thebes or in the hills or some far land creon to ask god's will in delphi he had planned his journey started and returned no more oedipus and came there nothing back no message nor none of his company that ye might hear creon they all were slain save one man blind with fear he came remembering naught or almost naught oedipus and what was that one thing has often brought others could we but catch one little clue creon twas not one man twas robbers that he knew who barred the road and slew him a great band oedipus robbers what robber save the work was planned by treason here would dare a risk so plain creon so some men thought but laius lay slain and none to avenge him in its evil day oedipus and what strange mischief when your master lay thus fallen held you back from search and deed creon the dark-songed phoenix was here we had no heed of distant sorrows having death so near oedipus it falls on me then i will search and clear this darkness well hath phoebus done and thou too to recall that dead king even now and with you for the right i also stand to obey the god and succour this dear land nor is it as for one that touches me far off tis for mine own sake i must see the sin cast out whoe'er it was that slew laius the same wild hand may seek me too and caring thus for laius is but care for mine own blood up leave this altar stair children take from it every suppliant bow then call the folk of thebes say tis my vow to uphold them to the end so god shall crown our greatness or forever cast us down he goes into the palace priest my children rise the king most lovingly hath promised all we came for and may he who sent this answer phoebus come confessed helper to thebes and strong to stay the pest the suppliants gather up their boughs and stand at the side the chorus of theban elders enter chorus they speak of the oracle which they have not yet heard and cry to apollo by his special cry Ea. a voice a voice that is born on the holy way what art thou o heavenly one o word of the houses of gold thebes is bright with thee and my heart it leapeth yet is it cold and my spirit faints as i pray Ea, Ea. what task o affrighter of evil what task shall thy people assay one new as our new-come affliction or an old toil returned with the years unveil thee thou dread benediction hope's daughter and fears they pray to athena artemis and apollo zeus child that knowest not death to thee i pray o pallas next to thy sister who calleth thebes her own artemis named of fair voices who sitteth her orbed throne in the throng of the market way and ea ea apollo the pure the far smiter o three that keep evil away if of old for our city's desire when the death cloud hung close to her brow ye have banished the wound and the fire o oh, come to us now they tell of the pestilence wounds beyond telling my people sick unto death and where is the counsellor where is the sword of thought and holy earth in her increase perisheth the child dies and the mother awaketh not Ea, Ea. we have seen them one on another gone as a bird is gone souls that are flame yea higher swifter they pass than fire to the rocks of the dying sun they end by a prayer to athena their city wasteth unnumbered their children lie where death hath cast them unpitied unwept upon the altars stand as in seas of storm a high rock standeth and wives and mothers grey thereon weep weep and pray lo joy cries to fright the destroyer a flash in the dark they rise then die by the sobs overladen 
send help o heaven-born maiden let us look on the light of her eyes to zeus that he drives out the slayer and ares the abhorred slayer who bears no sword but shrieking wrapped in fire stands over me make that he turn yea fly broken wind wasted high down the vexed hollow of the vaster sea or back to his own thrace to harbour shelterless where night hath spared he bringeth end by day him him o thou whose hand beareth the lightning brand o father zeus now with thy thunder slay and slay to apollo artemis and dionysus where is thy gold-strung bow o wolf-god where the flow of living shafts unconquered from all ills are helpers where the white spears of thy sister's light far flashing as she walks the wolf-wild hills and thou o golden crown theban and named our own o wine gleam voice of joy for evermore ringed with thy menads white bacchus draw near and smite smite with thy glad-eyed flame the god whom gods abhor during the last lines oedipus has come out from the palace oedipus thou prayest but my words if thou wilt hear and bow thee to their judgment strength is near for help and a great lightning of ill thereof i come to speak a stranger still to all this tale a stranger to the deed else save that i were clueless little need had i to cast my net so wide and far howbeit i being now as all ye are a theban to all thebans high and low do make proclaim if any here doth know by what man's hand died laius your king labdacus son i charge him that he bring to me his knowledge let him feel no fear if on a townsman's body he must clear our guilt the man shall suffer no great ill but pass from thebes and live where else he will no answer is it some alien from an alien shore ye know to have done the deed screen him no more good guerdon waits you now and a king's love hereafter ha if still ye will not move but fearing for yourselves or some near friend reject my charge then hearken to what end ye drive me if in this place men there be who know and speak not lo i make decree that while in thebes i bear the diadem no man shall greet no man shall shelter them nor give them water in their thirst nor share in sacrifice nor shrift nor dying prayer but thrust them from our doors the thing they hide being this land's curse thus hath the god replied this day to me from delphi and my sword i draw thus for the dead and for god's word and lastly for the murderer be it one hiding alone or more in unison i speak on him this curse even as his soul is foul within him let his days be foul and life unfriended grind him till he die more if he ever tread my hearth and i know it be every curse upon my head that i have spoke this day all i have said i charge ye strictly to fulfil and make perfect for my sake for apollo's sake and this land's sake deserted of her fruit and cast out from her gods nay were all mute at delphi still twere strange to leave the thing unfallowed when a true man and a king lay murdered all should search but i as now our fortunes fall his crown is on my brow his wife lies in my arms and common fate had but his issue been more fortunate might well have joined our children since this red chance hath so stamped its heel on laius head i am his champion left and as i would for mine own father choose for ill or good this quest to find the man who slew of yore labdacus son the son of polydor son of great cadmus whom agenor old begat of thebes first master and behold for them that aid me not i pray no root nor seed in earth may bear them corn nor fruit no wife bear children but this present curse cleave to them close and other woes yet worse enough ye other people of the land whose will is one with mine may justice stand your helper and all gods for evermore the crowd disperses leader o king even while thy curse yet hovers o'er my head i answer thee i slew him not nor can i show the slayer but god wot 
if phoebus sends this charge let phoebus read its meaning and reveal who did the deed oedipus ay that were just if of his grace he would reveal it how shall man compel his god leader second to that methinks twould help us most oedipus though it be third speak nothing should be lost leader to our high seer on earth vision is given most like to that high phoebus hath in heaven ask of tiresias he could tell thee true oedipus that also have i thought for ay and two heralds have sent ere now twas creon set me on i marvel that he comes not yet leader our other clues are weak old signs and far oedipus what signs i needs must question all that are leader some travellers slew him the tale used to be oedipus the tale yes but the witness where is he leader the man hath heard thy curses if he knows the taste of fear he will not long stay close oedipus he fear my words who never feared the deed leader well there is one shall find him see they lead hither our lord tiresias in whose mind all truth is born alone of humankind enter tiresias led by a young disciple he is an old blind man in a prophet's robe dark unkempt and sinister in appearance oedipus tiresias thou whose mind divineth well all truth the spoken and the unspeakable the things of heaven and them that walk the earth our city thou canst see for all thy dearth of outward eyes what clouds are over her in which o gracious lord no minister of help no champion can we find at all save thee for phoebus thou hast heard with all his message to our envoy hath decreed one only way of help in this great need to find and smite with death or banishing him who smote laius our ancient king o grudge us nothing question every cry of birds and all roads else of prophecy thou knowest save our city save thine own greatness save me save all that yet doth groan under the dead man's wrong lo in thy hand we lay us and methinks no work so grand hath man yet compassed as with all he can of chance or power to help his fellow man tiresias to himself ah oh, me a fearful thing is knowledge when to know helpeth no end i knew this long ago but crushed it dead else had i never come oedipus what means this comest thou so deep in gloom tiresias let me go back thy work shall weigh on thee the less if thou consent and mine on me oedipus prophet this is not lawful nay nor kind to thebes who feeds thee thus to veil thy mind tiresias tis that i like not thy mind nor the way it goeth therefore lest i also stray he moves to go off oedipus bars his road oedipus thou shalt not knowing turn and leave us see we all implore thee all on bended knee tiresias all without light and never light shall shine on this dark evil that is mine and thine oedipus what wilt thou know and speak not in my need be false to me and let thy city bleed tiresias i will not wound myself nor thee why seek to trap and question me i will not speak oedipus thou devil movement of leader to check him nay the wrath of any stone would rise at him it lies with thee to have done and speak is there no melting in thine eyes tiresias naught lies with me with thee with thee there lies i warrant what thou ne'er hast seen nor guessed oedipus to leader who tries to calm him how can i hear such talk he maketh jest of the land's woe and keep mine anger dumb tiresias howe'er i hold it back twill come twill come oedipus the more shouldst thou declare it to thy king tiresias i speak no more for thee if passioning doth comfort thee on passion to thy fill he moves to go oedipus for god i am in wrath and speak i will nor stint what i see clear twas thou twas thou didst plan this murder i and save the blow wrought it 
i know thou art blind else i could swear thou and thou only art the murderer tiresias returning so i command thee by thine own words power to stand accursed and never from this hour speak word to me nor yet to these who ring thy throne thou art thyself the unclean thing oedipus thou front of brass to fling out injury so wild dost think to bait me and go free tiresias i am free the strong truth is in this heart oedipus what prompted thee i swear twas not thine art tiresias twas thou i spoke not save for thy command oedipus spoke what what was it let me understand tiresias dost tempt me were my words before not plain oedipus scarce thy full meaning speak the words again tiresias thou seek'st this man of blood thyself art he oedipus twill cost thee dear twice to have stabbed at me tiresias shall i say more to see thee rage again oedipus oh take thy fill of speech twill all be vain tiresias thou livest with those near to thee in shame most deadly seeing not thyself nor them oedipus thou think'st twill help thee thus to speak and speak tiresias surely until the strength of truth be weak oedipus tis weak to none save thee thou hast no part in truth thou blind man blind eyes ears and heart tiresias more blind more sad thy words of scorn which none who hears but shall cast back on thee soon soon oedipus thou spawn of night not i nor any free and seeing man would hurt a thing like thee tiresias god is enough tis not my doom to fall by thee he knows and shall accomplish all oedipus with a flash of discovery ha creon is it his or thine this plot tiresias tis thyself hates thee creon hates thee not oedipus o oh, wealth and majesty o oh, conquering skill that carved life's rebel pathways to my will what is your heart but bitterness if now for this poor crown thebes bound upon my brow a gift a thing i sought not for this crown creon the stern and true creon mine own comrade comes creeping in the dark to ban and slay me sending first this magic man and schemer this false beggar priest whose eye is bright for gold and blind for prophecy speak thou when hast thou ever shown thee strong for aid the she-wolf of the woven song came and thy art could find no word no breath to save thy people from her riddling death twas scarce a secret that for common men to unravel there was need of seer craft then and thou hadst none to show no foul no flame no god revealed it thee twas i that came rude oedipus unlearned in wizard's lore and read her secret and she spoke no more whom now thou thinkest to hunt out and stand foremost in honour at king creon's hand i think he will be sorry thou and he that shares his sin hunt thou dost look to me an old man else i swear this day should bring on thee the death thou plottest for thy king leader lord oedipus these be but words of wrath all thou hast spoken all the prophet hath which skills not we must join for ill or well and search how best to obey god's oracle tiresias king though thou art thou needs must bear the right of equal answer even in me is might for thus much seeing i live no thrall of thine but lord apollo's neither do i sign where creon bids me i am blind and thou hast mocked my blindness yea i will speak now eyes hast thou but thy deeds thou canst not see nor where thou art nor what things dwell with thee whence art thou born thou knowst not and unknown on quick and dead on all that were thine own thou hast wrought hate for that across thy path rising a mother's and a father's wrath two-handed shod with fire from the haunts of men shall scourge thee in thine eyes now light but then darkness i shriek what harbour of the sea what wild cithiron shall not cry to thee in answer 
when thou hearest what bridal song what wind among the torches bore thy strong sail to its haven not of peace but blood yea ill things multitude on multitude thou seest not which so soon shall lay thee low low as thyself low as thy children go heap scorn on creon and my lips withal for this i tell thee never was there fall of pride nor shall be like to thine this day oedipus to brook such words from this thing out i say out to perdition ay and quick before the leader restrains him enough then turn and get thee from my door Tiresias, i had not come hadst thou not called me here oedipus i knew thee not so dark a fool i swear twere long before i called thee had i known Tiresias, fool sayest thou am i truly such an one the two who gave thee birth they held me wise oedipus birth stop who were they speak thy prophecies Tiresias, this day shall give thee birth and blot thee out oedipus oh riddles everywhere and words of doubt Tiresias, ay thou wast their best reader long ago oedipus laugh on i swear thou still shalt find me so Tiresias, that makes thy pride and thy calamity oedipus i have saved this land and care not if i die Tiresias, then i will go give me thine arm my child oedipus ay help him quick to see him there makes wild my heart once gone he will not vex me more Tiresias turning again as he goes i fear thee not nor will i go before that word be spoken which i came to speak how canst thou ever touch me thou dost seek with threats and loud proclaim the man whose hand slew laius lo i tell thee he doth stand here he is called a stranger but these days shall prove him theban true nor shall he praise his birthright blind who once had seeing eyes beggared who once had riches in strange guise his staff groping before him he shall crawl o'er unknown earth and voices round him call behold the brother father of his own children the seed the sower and the sown shame to his mother's blood and to his sire son murderer incest worker cool thine ire with thought of these and if thou find that aught faileth then hold my craft a thing of naught he goes out oedipus returns to the palace chorus they sing of the unknown murderer what man what man is he whom the voice of delphi's cell hath named of the bloody hand of the deed no tongue may tell let him fly fly for his need hath found him oh where is the speed that flew with the winds of old the team of north wind spell for feet there be that follow yea thunder shod and girt with fire he cometh the child of god and with him are they that fail not the sin hounds risen from hell for the mountain hath spoken a voice hath flashed from amid the snows that the wrath of the world go seek for the man whom no man knows is he fled to the wild forest to caves where the eagles nest o angry bull of the rocks cast out from thy herd fellows rage in his heart and rage across his way he toileth ever to beat from his ears away the word that floateth about him living where'er he goes and of the prophet's strange accusation yet strange passing strange the wise augur and his lore and my heart it cannot speak i deny not nor assent but float float in wonder at things after and before did there lie between their houses some old wrath unspent that corinth against cadmus should do murder by the way no tale thereof they tell nor no sign thereof they show who dares to rise for vengeance and cast oedipus away for a dark dark death long ago ah zeus knows and apollo what is dark to mortal eyes they are gods but a prophet hath he vision more than mine who hath seen who can answer there be wise men and unwise i will wait i will wait for the proving of the sign but i list not nor hearken when they speak oedipus ill we saw his face of yore when the riddling singer passed and we knew him that he loved us and we saw him great in skill oh my heart shall uphold him to the last enter creon creon 
good brother citizens a frantic word i hear is spoken by our chosen lord oedipus against me and here am come indignant if he dreams mid all this doom that weighs upon us he hath had from me or deed or lightest thought of injury for god i have no care to see the sun longer with such a groaning name not one wound is it but a multitude if now all thebes must hold me guilty i and thou and all who loved me of a deed so foul leader if words were spoken it was scarce the soul that spoke them twas some sudden burst of wrath creon the charge was made then that tiresias hath made answer false and that i bribed him i leader it was perchance for jest i know not why creon his heart beat true his eyes looked steadily and fell not laying such a charge on me leader i know not i have no eyes for the thing my masters do but see here comes the king enter oedipus from the palace end of part one recording by expatriate in bangor maine Part two of Oedipus Rex by Sophocles translated by Gilbert Murray eighteen sixty six to nineteen fifty seven. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part two Oedipus How now, assassin? Walking at my gate with eye undimmed, thou plotter demonstrate against this life and robber of my crown? God help thee. Me? what was it set me down thy butt so dull a brain has found in me aforetime such a faint heart not to see thy work betimes or seeing not to smite art thou not rash this once it needeth might of friends it needeth gold to make a throne thy quarry and i fear me thou hast none creon one thing alone i ask thee let me speak as thou hast spoken then with knowledge wreak thy judgment i accept it without fear oedipus more skill hast thou to speak than i to hear thee there is peril found in thee and hate creon that one thing let me answer ere too late oedipus one thing be sure of that thy plots are known creon the man who thinks that bitter pride alone can guide him without thought his mind is sick oedipus who thinks to slay his brother with a trick and suffer not himself his eyes are blind creon thy words are more than just but say what kind of wrong thou fanciest i have done thee speak oedipus didst urge me or didst urge me not to seek a counsel from that man of prophecies creon so judged i then nor now judge otherwise oedipus suddenly seeing a mode of attack how many years have passed since laius the words seemed to choke him creon speak on i cannot understand thee thus oedipus with an effort passed in that bloody tempest from men's sight creon long years and old i scarce can tell them right oedipus at that time was this seer in thebes or how creon he was most wise and honoured even as now oedipus at that time did he ever speak my name creon no to mine ear at least it never came oedipus held you no search for those who slew your king creon for sure we did but found not anything oedipus how came the all-knowing seer to leave it so creon ask him i speak not where i cannot know oedipus one thing thou canst with knowledge full i wot creon speak it if true i will conceal it not oedipus this that until he talked with thee the seer ne'er spoke of me as laius murderer creon i know not if he hath so spoken now i heard him not but let me ask and thou answer me true as i have answered thee oedipus ask ask thou shalt no murder find in me creon my sister is thy wife this many a day oedipus that charge it is not in me to gainsay creon 
thou reignest giving equal reign to her oedipus always to her desire i minister creon were we not all as one she thou and i oedipus yes thou false friend there lies thy treachery creon not so nay do but follow me and scan thine own charge close think'st thou that any man would rather rule and be afraid than rule and sleep untroubled nay where lives the fool i know them not nor am i one of them who careth more to bear a monarch's name than do a monarch's deeds as now i stand all my desire i compass at thy hand were i the king full half my deeds were done to obey the will of others not mine own were that as sweet when all the tale were told as this calm griefless princedom that i hold in silent power am i so blind of brain that ease with glory tires me and i fain must change them all men now give me godspeed all smile to greet me if a man hath need of thee tis me he calleth to the gate as knowing that on my word hangs the fate of half he craves is life like mine a thing to cast aside and plot to be a king doth a sane man turn villain in an hour for me i never lusted thus for power nor bore with any man who turns such lust to doing but enough i claim but just question go first to pytho find if well and true i did report god's oracle next seek in thebes for any plots entwined between this seer and me which if ye find then seize and strike me dead myself that day will sit with thee as judge and bid thee slay but damn me not on one man's guest tis all unjust to call a traitor true to call a true man traitor with no cause nor end and this i tell thee he who plucks a friend out from his heart hath lost a treasured thing dear as his own dear life but time shall bring truth back tis time alone can make men know what hearts are true the false one day can show leader to one that fears to fall his words are wise o king in thought the swift win not the prize oedipus when he is swift who steals against my reign with plots then swift am i to plot again wait patient and his work shall have prevailed before i move and mine forever failed creon how then to banish me is thy intent oedipus death is the doom i choose not banishment creon wilt never soften never trust thy friend oedipus first i would see how traitors meet their end creon i see thou wilt not think oedipus i think to save my life creon think too of mine oedipus thine thou born knave creon yes what if thou art blind in everything oedipus the king must be obeyed creon not if the king does evil oedipus to your king ho thebes mine own creon thebes is my country not the king's alone oedipus has drawn his sword the chorus shows signs of breaking into two parties to fight for oedipus or for creon when the door opens and jocasta appears on the steps leader stay princes stay see on the castle stair the queen jocasta standeth show to her your strife she will assuage it as is well jocasta vain men what would ye with this angry swell of words heart blinded is there in your eyes no pity thus when all our city lies bleeding to ply your privy hates alack my lord come in thou creon get thee back to thine own house and stir not to such stress of peril griefs that are but nothingness creon sister it is the pleasure of thy lord our king to do me deadly wrong his word is passed on me tis banishment or death oedipus i found him i deny not what he saith my queen with craft and malice practising against my life creon ye gods if such a thing hath once been in my thoughts may i no more see any health on earth but festered o'er with curses die have done there is mine oath jocasta in god's name oedipus believe him both for my sake and for these whose hearts are all thine own and for my brother's oath withal leader yield consent think 
my lord i conjure thee oedipus what would ye have me do leader reject not one who never failed his troth of old and now is strong in his great oath oedipus dost know what this prayer means leader yea verily oedipus say then the meaning true leader i would not have thee cast to infamy of guilt where none is proved one who hath sworn and whom thou once hast loved oedipus tis that ye seek for me then understand well ye seek death or exile from the land leader no by the god of gods the all-seeing sun may he desert me here and every friend with him to death and uttereth malison if e'er my heart could dream of such an end but it bleedeth it bleedeth sore in a land half slain if we join to the griefs of your griefs of you twain oedipus oh let him go though it be utterly my death or flight from thebes in beggary tis thy sad lips not his that make me no pity him i shall hate where'er he go creon i see thy mercy moving full of hate and slow thy wrath came swift and desperate methinks of all the pain that such a heart spreadeth itself doth bear the bitterest part oedipus o oh, leave me and be gone creon i go wronged sore by thee these friends will trust me as before creon goes oedipus stands apart lost in trouble of mind leader queen wilt thou lead him to his house again jocasta i will when i have heard leader there fell some word some blind imagining between them things known foolish yet can sting jocasta from both the twain it rose leader from both the twain jocasta ay and what was the word leader surely there is enough of evil stirred and thebes heaves on the swell of storm o oh, leave this lying where it fell oedipus so be it thou wise counsellor make slight my wrong and blunt my purpose ere it smite leader o oh, king not once i have answered visibly mad were i lost to all wise usages to seek to cast thee from us twas from thee we saw of old blue sky and summer seas when thebes in the storm and rain reeled like to die oh if thou canst again blue sky blue sky jocasta husband in god's name say what hath ensued of ill that thou shouldst seek so dire a feud oedipus i will wife i have more regard for thee than these thy brother plots to murder me jocasta speak on make all thy charge only be clear oedipus he says that i am laius murderer jocasta says it himself says he hath witnesses oedipus nay of himself he ventures nothing tis this priest this hellish seer makes all the tale jocasta the seer then tear thy terrors like a veil and take free breath a seer no human thing born on the earth hath power for conjuring truth from the dark of god come i will tell an old tale there came once an oracle to laius i say not from the god himself but from the priests and seers who trod his sanctuary if ever son were bred from him and me by that son's hand it said laius must die and he the tale yet stays among us at the crossing of three ways was slain by robbers strangers and my son god's mercy scarcely the third day was gone when laius took and by another's hand out on the desert mountain where the land is rock cast him to die through both his feet a blade of iron they drove thus did we cheat apollo of his will my child could slay no father and the king could cast away the fear that dogged him by his child to die murdered behold the fruits of prophecy which heed not thou god needs not that a seer help him when he would make his dark things clear oedipus woman what turmoil hath thy story wrought within me what upstirring of old thought jocasta what thought it turns thee like a frightened thing oedipus twas at the crossing of three ways this king was murdered so i heard or so i thought jocasta that was the tale 
it is not yet forgot oedipus the crossing of three ways and in what land jocasta phocus tis called a road on either hand from delphi comes and daulia in a glen oedipus how many years and months have passed since then jocasta twas but a little time before proclaim was made of thee for king the tidings came oedipus my god what hast thou willed to do with me jocasta oedipus speak what is it troubles thee oedipus ask me not yet but say what build what height had laius rode he full of youth and might jocasta tall with a white new gleaming on his brow he walked in shape just such a man as thou oedipus god help me i much fear that i have wrought a curse on mine own head and knew it not jocasta how sayest thou o my king i look on thee and tremble oedipus to himself horror if the blind can see answer but one thing and twill all be clear jocasta speak i will answer though i shake with fear oedipus went he with scant array or a great band of armed followers like a lord of land jocasta four men were with him one a herald one chariot there was where laius rode alone oedipus ay me tis clear now woman who could bring to thebes the story of that man-slaying jocasta a house-thrall the one man they failed to slay oedipus the one man is he in the house to-day jocasta indeed no when he came that day and found thee on the throne where once sat laius crowned he took my hand and prayed me earnestly to send him to the mountain heights to be a herdsman far from any sight or call of thebes and there i sent him twas a thrall good-hearted worthy a far greater boon oedipus canst find him i would see this herd and soon jocasta tis easy but what wouldst thou with the herd oedipus i fear mine own voice lest it spoke a word too much whereof this man must tell me true jocasta the man shall come my lord methinks i too should know what fear doth work thee this despite oedipus thou shalt when i am tossed to such an height of dark foreboding woman when my mind faceth such straits as these where should i find a mightier love than thine my father thus i tell thee the whole tale was polybus in corinth king my mother merope of dorian line and i was held to be the proudest in corinthia till one day a thing befell strange was it but no way meet for such wonder and such rage as mine a feast it was and some one flushed with wine cried out at me that i was no true son of polybus oh i was wroth that one day i kept silence but the morrow morn i sought my parents told that tale of scorn and claimed the truth and they rose in their pride and smote the mocker ay they satisfied all my desire yet still the cavil gnawed my heart and still the story crept abroad at last i rose my father knew not nor my mother and went forth to pythos floor to ask and god in that for which i came rejected me but round me like a flame his voice flashed other answers things of woe terror and desolation i must know my mother's body and beget thereon a race no mortal eye durst look upon and spill in murder mine own father's blood i heard and hearing straight from where i stood no landmark but the stars to light my way fled fled from the dark south where corinth lay to lands far off where never i might see my doom of scorn fulfilled on bitterly i strode and reached the region where so saith thy tale that king of thebes was struck to death wife i will tell thee true as one in days i walked till at the crossing of three ways a herald like thy tale and o'er his head a man behind strong horses charioted met me and both would turn me from the path he and a thrall in front and i in wrath smote him that pushed me twas a groom who led the horses not a word the master said but watched and as i passed him on the road down on my head his iron branched goad stabbed but by heaven he rued it 
in a flash i swung my staff and saw the old man crash back from his car in blood then all of them i slew oh if that man's unspoken name had aught of lias in him in god's eye what man doth move more miserable than i more dogged by the hate of heaven no man kin nor stranger any more may take me in no man may greet me with a word but all cast me from out their houses and withal twas mine own self that laid upon my life these curses and i hold the dead man's wife in these polluting arms that spilt his soul am i a thing born evil am i foul in every vein thebes now doth banish me and never in this exile must i see mine ancient folk of corinth never tread the land that bore me else my mother's bed shall be defiled and polybus my good father who loved me well be rolled in blood if one should dream that such a world began in some slow devil's heart that hated man who should deny him god as thou art clean suffer not this oh suffer not this sin to be that e'er i look on such a day out of all vision of mankind away to darkness let me fall ere such a fate touch me so unclean and so desolate leader i tremble too o king but till thou hear from him who saw o oh, let hope conquer fear oedipus one shred of hope i still have and therefore will wait the herdsman's coming tis no more jocasta he shall come but what further dost thou seek oedipus this if we mark him close and find him speak as thou hast then i am lifted from my dread jocasta what meanst thou was there something that i said oedipus thou saidst he spoke of robbers a great band that slaughtered laius men if still he stand to the same tale the guilt comes not my way one cannot be a band but if he say one lonely loin girt man then visibly this is god's finger pointing toward me jocasta be sure of this he told the story so when first he came all they that heard him know not only i he cannot change again now and if change he should o lord of men no change of his can make the prophecy of laius death fall true he was to die slain by my son so loxias spake my son he slew no man that poor deserted one that died and i will no more turn mine eyes this way nor that for all their prophecies oedipus woman thou counsellest well yet let it not escape thee send and have the herdsman brought jocasta that will i come thou knowest i ne'er would do nor think of aught save thou wouldst have it so jocasta and oedipus go together into the palace chorus they pray to be free from such great sins as they have just heard spoken of toward god's great mysteries o oh, let me move unstained till i die in speech or doing for the laws thereof are holy walkers upon ways above born in the far blue sky their father is olympus uncreate no man hath made nor told their being neither shall oblivion set sleep on their eyes for in them lives a great spirit and grows not old they wonder if these sins be all due to pride and if creon has guilty ambitions tis pride that breeds the tyrant drunken deep with perilous things is she which bring not peace up reeling steep on steep she climbs till lo the rock edge and the leap to that which needs must be the land where the strong foot is no more strong yet is there surely pride that saves a city god preserve it long i judge not only through all maze of wrong be god not man my guide or if tiresias can really be a lying prophet with no fear of god they feel that all faith in oracles and the things of god is shaken is there a priest who moves amid the altars ruthless in deed and word fears not the presence of his god nor falters lest right at last be heard if such there be o oh, let some doom be given meet for his ill-starred pride who will not gain his gain where justice is who will not hold his lips from blasphemies who hurls rash hands amid the things of heaven from man's touch sanctified in a world where such things be what spirit hath shield or lance to ward him secretly from the arrow that slays askance 
if honour to such things be why should i dance my dance i go no more with prayers and adorations to earth's deep heart of stone nor yet the abantes floor nor where the nations kneel at olympia's throne till all this dark be lightened for the finger of man to touch and know o thou that rulest if men rightly call thy name on earth o zeus thou lord of all and strength undying let not these things linger unknown tossed to and fro for faint is the oracle and they thrust it aside away and no more visible apollo to save or slay and the things of god they fail as mist on the wind away jocasta comes out from the palace followed by handmaids bearing incense and flowers jocasta lords of the land the ways my thought hath trod lead me in worship to these shrines of god with flowers and incense flame so dire a storm doth shake the king sin dread and every form of grief the world knows tis the wise man's way to judge the morrow by the yesterday sleep sleep he doth never but gives eye and ear to all who speak will they but speak of fear and seeing no word of mine hath power to heal his torment therefore forth to thee i steal o slayer of the wolf o lord of light apollo thou art near us and of right dost hold us thine to thee in prayer i fall she kneels at the altar of apollo lukeos o show us still some path that is not all unclean for now our captain's eyes are dim with dread and the whole ship must follow him while she prays a stranger has entered and begins to accost the chorus stranger good masters is there one of you could bring my steps to the house of oedipus your king or better to himself if that may be leader this is the house and he within and she thou seest the mother of his royal seed jocasta arises anxious from her prayer stranger being wife to such a man happy indeed and ringed with happy faces may she live jocasta to one so fair of speech may the gods give like blessing courteous stranger tis thy due but say what leads thee hither can we do thy wish in aught or hast thou news to bring stranger good news o queen for thee and for the king jocasta what is it and from what prince comest thou stranger i come from corinth and my tale i trow will give thee joy yet haply also pain jocasta what news can have that twofold power be plain stranger tis spoke in corinth that the gathering of folk will make thy lord our chosen king jocasta how is old polybus in power no more stranger death has a greater power his reign is o'er jocasta what sayst thou dead oedipus father dead stranger if i speak false let me die in his stead jocasta ho maiden to our master hie thee fast and tell this tale the maiden goes where stand ye at the last ye oracles of god for many a year oedipus fled before that man in fear to slay him and behold we find him thus slain by a chance death not by oedipus oedipus comes out from the palace oedipus o wife o face i love to look upon why callest thou me from where i sat alone jocasta give ear and ponder from what this man tells how end these proud priests and their oracles oedipus whence comes he and what word hath he for us jocasta from corinth bearing news that polybus thy father is no more he has found his death oedipus how stranger speak thyself this that she saith stranger is sure if that is the first news ye crave i tell thee polybus lieth in his grave oedipus not murdered how some passing of disease stranger a slight thing turns an old life to its peace oedipus poor father tis by sickness he is dead stranger the growing years lay heavy on his head oedipus o wife why then should man fear any more the face of pytho's dome or cower before these birds that shriek above us they foretold me for my father's murderer 
and behold he lies in corinth dead and here am i and never touch the sword or did he die in grief for me who left him in that way i may have wrought his death but come what may he sleepeth in his grave and with him all this deadly seercraft of no worth at all jocasta dear lord long since did i not show thee clear oedipus indeed yes i was warped by mine own fear jocasta now thou wilt cast it from thee and forget oedipus forget my mother it is not over yet jocasta what should man do with fear who hath but chance above him and no sight nor governance of things to be to live as life may run no fear no fret were wisest neath the sun and thou fear not thy mother prophets deem a deed wrought that is wrought but in a dream and he to whom these things are nothing best will bear his burden oedipus all thou counsellest were good save that my mother liveth still and though thy words be wise for good or ill her i still fear jocasta think of thy father's tomb like light across our darkness it hath come oedipus great light but while she lives i fly from her stranger what woman prince doth fill thee so with fear oedipus merope friend who dwelt with polybus stranger what in queen merope should fright thee thus oedipus a voice of god stranger of dire import stranger meet for mine ears or of some secret sort oedipus nay thou must hear and corinth long ago apollo spake a doom that i should know my mother's flesh and with mine own hands spill my father's blood tis that and not my will hath kept me always far from corinth so life hath dealt kindly with me yet men know on earth no comfort like a mother's face stranger tis that hath kept thee exiled in this place oedipus that and the fear too of my father's blood stranger then surely lord i came but for thy good twere well if from that fear i set thee free oedipus ah couldst thou there were rich reward for thee stranger to say truth i had hoped to lead thee home now and myself to get some good therefrom oedipus nay where my parents are i will not go stranger my son tis very clear thou dost not know what road thou goest oedipus how in god's name say how clear stranger tis this keeps thee so long away from corinth oedipus tis the fear lest that word break one day upon me true stranger fear lest thou take defilement from the two that gave thee birth oedipus tis that old man tis that that doth fill the earth with terror stranger then thy terror all hath been for nothing oedipus how were not your king and queen my parents stranger polybus was naught to thee in blood oedipus how he my father stranger that was he as much as i but no more oedipus thou art naught twas he begot me stranger twas not i begot oedipus neither was it he oedipus what wild fancy then made him name me for his child stranger thou wast his child by gift long years ago mine own hand brought thee to him oedipus coming so from a strange hand he gave me that great love stranger he had no child and the desire thereof held him oedipus and thou didst find somewhere or buy a child for him stranger i found it in a high glen of cathiron movement of jocasta who stands riveted with dread unnoticed by the others oedipus yonder to what end was travelling in these parts stranger i came to tend the flocks here on the mountain oedipus thou wast one that wandered tending sheep for hire stranger my son that day i was the saviour of a king oedipus how saviour was i in some suffering or peril stranger thine own feet a tale could speak oedipus ah me what ancient pain stirs half awake within me stranger twas a spike through both thy feet 
i set thee free oedipus a strange scorn that to greet a babe new on the earth stranger from that they fain must call thee oedipus who walks in pain oedipus who called me so father or mother oh in god's name speak stranger i know not he should know who brought thee oedipus so i was not found by thee thou hadst me from another stranger ay to me one of the shepherds gave the babe to bear far off oedipus what shepherd knowst thou not declare all that thou knowest stranger by my memory then i think they called him one of laius men oedipus that laius who was king in thebes of old stranger the same my man did herding in his fold oedipus is he yet living can i see his face stranger turning to the chorus ye will know that being natives to the place oedipus how is there one of you within my pale standing that knows the shepherd of his tale ye have seen him on the hills or in this town speak for the hour is come that all be known leader i think twill be the peasant man the same thou hast sought long time to see his place and name our mistress if she will can tell most clear jocasta remains as if she heard nothing oedipus thou hearst him wife the herd whose presence here we crave for is it he this man would say jocasta he saith what of it ask not only pray not to remember tales are vainly told oedipus tis mine own birth how can i when i hold such clues as these refrain from knowing all jocasta for god's love no not if thou carest at all for thine own life my anguish is enough oedipus bitterly fear not though i be thrice of slavish stuff from my third grandam down it shames not thee jocasta ask no more i beseech thee promise me oedipus to leave the truth half found tis not my mood jocasta i understand and tell thee what is good oedipus thy good doth weary me jocasta o child of woe i pray god i pray god thou never know oedipus turning from her go fetch the herdsman straight this queen of mine may walk alone to boast her royal line jocasta she twice draws in her breath through her teeth as if in some sharp pain unhappy one good-bye good-bye before i go this once and never never more she comes towards him as though to take a last farewell then stops suddenly turns and rushes into the palace end of part two recording by expatriate in bangor maine Part three of Oedipus Rex by Sophocles, translated by Gilbert Murray, eighteen sixty six to nineteen fifty seven. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part three. Leader, King, what was that? She passed like one who flies in very anguish. Dread is o'er mine eyes, lest from this silence break some storm of wrong oedipus break what break will my mind abideth strong to know the roots how low soe'er they be which grew to oedipus this woman she is proud methinks and fears my birth and name will mar her nobleness but i no shame can ever touch me i am fortune's child not man's her mother face hath ever smiled above me and my brethren of the sky the changing moons have changed me low and high there is my lineage true which none shall wrest from me who then am i to fear this quest chorus they sing of oedipus as the foundling of their own theban mountain cithiron and doubtless of divine birth if i o cithiron some vision can borrow from seer craft if still there is wit in the old long long through the deep orbid moon of the morrow so hear me olympus thy tale shall be told o mountain of thebes a new theban shall praise thee 
one born of thy bosom one nursed at thy springs and the old men shall dance to thy glory and raise thee to worship o bearer of joy to my kings and thou we pray look down in peace o apollo ea ea what oread mother unaging unweeping did bear thee o babe to the crag walker pan or perchance to apollo he loveth the leaping of herds on the rockways unhaunted of men or was it the lord of kyllene who found thee or glad dionysus whose home is the height who knew thee his own on the mountain as round thee the white brides of helicon laugh for delight tis there tis there the joy most liveth of all his dance and prayer oedipus if i may judge ye elders who have ne'er seen him methinks i see the shepherd there whom we have sought so long his weight of years fits well with our corinthian messengers and more i know the men who guide his way bondsmen of mine own house thou friend wilt say most surely who hast known the man of old leader i know him well a shepherd of the fold of laius one he trusted more than all the shepherd comes in led by two thralls he is an old man and seems terrified oedipus thou first our guest from corinth say withal is this the man stranger this is the man o king oedipus addressing the shepherd old man look up and answer everything i ask thee thou wast laius man of old shepherd born in his house i was not bought with gold oedipus what kind of work what way of life was thine shepherd most of my days i tended sheep or kine oedipus what was thy camping ground at midsummer shepherd sometime kithiron sometimes mountains near oedipus sawst ever there this man thou seest now shepherd there lord what doing what man meanest thou oedipus pointing to the stranger look hath he ever crossed thy path before shepherd i call him not to mind i must think more stranger small wonder that o king but i will throw light on his memories right well i know he knows the time when all kithiron through i with one wandering herd and he with two three times we neighboured one another clear from spring to autumn stars a good half year at winter's fall we parted he drove down to his master's fold and i back to mine own dost call it back friend was it as i say shepherd it was it was tis all so far away stranger say then thou gavest me once there in the wild a babe to rear far off as mine own child shepherd his terror returning what does this mean to what end askest thou stranger pointing to oedipus that babe has grown friend tis our master now shepherd he slowly understands then stands for a moment horror struck no in the name of death fool hold thy peace he lifts his staff at the stranger oedipus ha ha greybeard wouldst thou strike him tis not his offences tis thine own we need to mend shepherd most gentle master how do i offend oedipus whence came that babe whereof he questioneth shepherd he doth not know tis folly what he saith oedipus thou wilt not speak for love but pain may be shepherd i am very old ye would not torture me oedipus back with his arms ye bondmen hold him so the thralls drag back the shepherd's arms ready for torture shepherd woe's me what have i done what wouldst thou know oedipus didst give this man the child as he doth say shepherd i did would god that i had died this day oedipus for heaven thou shalt yet if thou speak not true shepherd tis more than death and darker if i do oedipus this dog it seems will keep us waiting shepherd nay i said at first i gave it oedipus in what way came it to thee was it thine own child or another's shepherd nay it never crossed my door another's oedipus whose what man what house of these about thee shepherd 
in the name of god who sees ask me no more oedipus if once i ask again thou diest shepherd from the folk of laius then it came oedipus a slave or born of laius blood shepherd there comes the word i dread to speak o god oedipus and i to hear yet heard it needs must be shepherd know then they said twas laius child but she within thy wife best knows its fathering oedipus twas she that gave it shepherd it was she o king oedipus and bade you what shepherd destroy it oedipus her own child cruel shepherd dark words of god had made her wild oedipus what words shepherd the babe must slay his father so twas written oedipus why didst thou then let him go with this old man shepherd o king i pitied him i thought the man would save him to some dim and distant land beyond all fear and he to worse than death did save him verily if thou art he whom this man telleth of to sore affliction thou art born oedipus enough all all shall be fulfilled o oh, on these eyes shed light no more ye everlasting skies that know my sin i have sinned in birth and breath i have sinned with woman i have sinned with death he rushes into the palace the shepherd is led away by the thralls chorus nothingness nothingness ye children of man and less i count you waking or dreaming and none among mortals none seeking to live hath one more than to seem and to cease again from his seeming while ever before mine eyes one fate one ensample lies thine thine o oedipus sore of god oppressed what thing that is human more dare i call blessed straight his archery flew to the heart of living he knew joy in the fullness of power o zeus when the riddling breath was stayed and the maid of death slain and we saw him through the death cloud a tower for that he was called my king yea every precious thing wherewith men are honoured down we cast before him and great thebes brought her crown and kneeled to adore him but now what man's story is such bitterness to speak what life hath delusion so visited and pain and swiftness of disaster o great king our master how ope the one haven to the slayer and the slain and the furrows of thy father did they turn not nor shriek did they bear so long silent thy casting of the grain tis time time desireless hath shown thee what thou art the long monstrous mating it is judged in all its race o child of him that sleepeth thy land weepeth weepeth unfathered would god i had never seen thy face from thee in great peril fell peace upon my heart in thee mine eye clouded and the dark is come apace a messenger rushes out from the palace messenger o oh, ye above this land in honour old exalted what a tale shall ye be told what sight shall see and tears of horror shed if still your hearts be true to them that led your sires there runs no river well i ween nor phasis nor great ister shall wash clean this house of all within that hideth nay nor all that creepeth forth to front the day of purposed horror and in misery that woundeth most which men have willed to be leader no lack there was in what we knew before of food for heaviness what bringst thou more messenger one thing i bring thee first tis quickly said jocasta our anointed queen is dead leader unhappy woman how came death to her messenger by her own hand oh of what passed in there ye have been spared the worst ye cannot see howbeit with that which still is left in me of mind and memory ye shall hear her fate like one entranced with passion through the gate she passed the white hands flashing o'er her head like blades that tear and fled unswerving fled toward her old bridal room and disappeared and the doors crashed behind her but we heard her voice within crying to him of old her laius long dead 
and things untold of the old kiss unforgotten that should bring the lover's death and leave the loved a thing of horror yea a field beneath the plough for sire and son then wailing bitter low across that bed of births unreconciled husband from husband born and child from child and after that i know not how her death found her for sudden with a roar of wrath burst oedipus upon us then i ween we mark no more what passion held the queen but him as in the fury of his stride a sword a sword and show me here he cried that wife no wife that field of blood-stained earth where husband father sin on sin had birth polluted generations while he thus raged on some god for church was none of us showed where she was and with a shout away as though some hand had pointed to the prey he dashed him on the chamber door the straight door-bar of oak it bent beneath his weight shook from its sockets free and in he burst to the dark chamber there we saw her first hanged swinging from a noose like a dead bird he fell back when he saw her then we heard a miserable groan and straight he found and loosed the strangling knot and on the ground laid her ah then the sight of horror came the pin of gold broad beaten like a flame he tore from off her breast and left and right down on the shuddering orbits of his sight dashed it out out ye never more shall see me nor the anguish nor the sins of me ye looked on lives whose like earth never bore ye knew not those my spirit thirsted for therefore be dark for ever like a song his voice rose and again again the strong and stabbing hand fell and the massacred and bleeding eyeballs streamed upon his beard wild rain and gouts of hail amid the rain behold affliction yea afflictions twain from man and woman broken now made one in downfall all the riches yester son saw in this house were rich in verity what call ye now our riches agony delusion death shame all that eye or ear hath ever dreamed of misery is here leader and now how fares he doth the storm abate messenger he shouts for one to open wide the gate and lead him forth and to all thebes display his father's murderer his mother's nay such words i will not speak and his intent is set to cast himself in banishment out to the wild not walk mid human breed bearing the curse he bears yet sore his need of strength and of some guiding hand for sure he hath more burden now than man may endure but see the gates fall back and that appears which he who loathes shall pity yea with tears oedipus is led in blinded and bleeding the old men bow down and hide their faces some of them weep chorus o oh, terrible o oh, sight of all this life hath crossed most terrible thou man more wrong than tongue can tell what madness took thee do there crawl live things of evil from the deep to leap on man oh what a leap was his that flung thee to thy fall leader o oh, fallen fallen in ghastly case i dare not raise mine eyes to thee fain would i look and ask and see but shudder sicken from thy face oedipus o oh, pain pain and woe whither whither they lead me and i go and my voice drifts on the air far away where thing of evil where endeth thy leaping hither leading it. leader in fearful ends which none may hear nor say oedipus cloud of the dark mine own for ever horrible stealing stealing silent unconquerable cloud that no wind no summer can dispel again again i groan as through my heart together crawl the strong stabs of this pain and memories of old wrong leader yea twofold hosts of torment hast thou there the stain to think on and the pain to bear oedipus o oh, friend thou mine own still faithful minister steadfast abiding alone of them that were dost bear with me and give the blind man care ah me not all unknown nor hid thou art 
deep in this dark a call comes and i know thy voice in spite of all leader o oh, fearful sufferer and couldst thou kill thy living orbs what god made blind thy will oedipus tis apollo all tis apollo o ye that love me tis he long time hath planned these things upon me evilly evilly dark things and full of blood i knew not i did but follow his way but mine the hand and mine the anguish what were mine eyes to me when not to be seen was good leader tis even so and truth does speak in thee oedipus to see to endure to hear words kindly spoken should i have joy in such out if ye love your breath cast me swift unto solitude unbroken by word or touch am i not charged with death most charged and filled to the brim with curses and what man saith god hath so hated him leader thy bitter will thy hard calamity would i had never known nor looked on thee oedipus my curse my curse upon him that man whom pity held in the wilderness who saved the feet alive from the blood fetter and loosed the barb thereof that babe what grace was done him had he died shelterless he had not laid on himself this grief to bear and all who gave him love leader i too o oh friend i had been happier oedipus found not the way to his father's blood nor shaken the world's scorn on his mother the child and the groom withal but now of murderers born of god forsaken mine own son's brother all this and if aught can fall upon man more perilous and elder in sin lo all is the portion of oedipus leader how shall i hold this counsel of thy mind true thou wert better dead than living blind oedipus that this deed is not well and wisely wrought thou shalt not show me therefore school me not think with what eyes hereafter in the place of shadows could i see my father's face or my poor mother's both of whom this hand hath wronged too deep for man to understand or children born as mine were born to see their shape should bring me joy great god to me there is no joy in city nor in tower nor temple from all whom in this mine hour i that was chief in thebes alone and ate the king's bread i have made me separate for ever mine own lips have bid the land cast from it one so evil one whose hand to sin was dedicate whom god hath shown birth branded and my blood the dead king's own all this myself have proved and can i then look with straight eyes into the eyes of men i trow not nay if any stop there were to damn this fount that welleth in mine ear for hearing i had never blenched nor stayed till this vile shell were all one dungeon made dark without sound tis thus the mind would fain find peace self-prison from a world of pain o wild cithiron why was it thy will to save me why not take me quick and kill kill before ever i could make men know the thing i am the thing from which i grow thou dead king polybus thou city wall of corinth thou old castle i did call my fathers what a life did ye begin what splendour rotted by the worm within when ye bred me o crossing of the roads o secret glen and dusk of crowding woods o narrow footpath creeping to the brink where meet the three i gave you blood to drink do ye remember twas my life-blood hot from mine own father's heart have ye forgot what deed i did among you and what new and direr deed i fled from you to do o oh, flesh horror of flesh but what is shame to do should not be spoken in god's name take me somewhere far off and cover me from sight or slay or cast me to the sea where never eye may see me any more what do ye fear to touch a man so sore stricken nay tremble not my misery is mine and shall be borne by none but me leader lo yonder comes for answer to thy prayer creon to do and to decree the care of all our land is his now thou art weak oedipus alas what word to creon can i speak i'll make him trust me more 
he hath seen of late so vile a heart in me so full of hate enter creon creon not to make laughter oedipus nor cast against thee any evil of the past i seek thee but ah oh gods ye ministers have ye no hearts or if for man there stirs no pity in you fear at least to call stain on our lord the sun who feedeth all nor show in nakedness a horror such as this which never mother earth may touch nor god's clean rain nor sunlight quick within guide him the ills that in a house have been they of the house alone should know or hear oedipus in god's name since thou hast undone the fear within me coming thus all nobleness to one so vile grant me one only grace for thy sake more i crave it than mine own creon let me first hear what grace thou wouldst be shown oedipus cast me from thebes now quick where none may see my visage more nor mingle words with me creon that had i done for sure save that i still tremble and fain would ask apollo's will oedipus his will was clear enough to stamp the unclean thing out the bloody hand the heart of sin creon twas thus he seemed to speak but in this sore strait we must needs learn surer than before oedipus thou needs must trouble god for one so low creon surely thyself will trust his answer now oedipus i charge thee more and if thou fail my sin shall cleave to thee for her who lies within make as thou wilt her burial tis thy task to tend thine own but me let no man ask this ancient city of my sires to give harbour in life to me set me to live on the wild hills and leave my name to those deeps of cithiron which my father chose and mother for my vast and living tomb as they my murderers willed it let my doom find me for this my very heart doth know no sickness now nor any mortal blow shall slay this body never had my breath been thus kept burning in the midst of death save for some frightful end so let my way go where it listeth but my children nay creon my sons will ask thee for no care men are they and can find them everywhere what life needs but my two poor desolate maidens there was no table ever set apart for them but what so royal fare i tasted they were with me and had share in all creon i pray forget them not and if it may be go bid them be brought creon goes and presently returns with the two princesses oedipus thinks he is there all the time that i may touch their faces and so weep go prince go noble heart if i might touch them i should seem to keep and not to have lost them now mine eyes are gone what say i in god's name can it be i hear mine own beloved one sobbing creon of his grace hath brought my two my dearest to this place is it true creon tis true i brought them for in them i know thy joy is the same now as long ago oedipus god bless thee and in this hard journey give some better guide than mine to help thee live children children where are ye hither come to these arms of your brother whose wild offices have brought much darkness on the once bright eyes of him who grew your garden who nowise seeing nor understanding digged a ground the world shall shudder at children my wound is yours too and i cannot meet your gaze now as i think me what remaining days of bitter living the world hath for you what dance of damsels shall ye gather to what feast of thebes but quick ye shall turn home all tears or ere the feast or dancers come and children when ye reach the years of love who shall dare wed you whose heart rise above the peril to take on him all the shame that cleaves to my name and my children's name god knows it is enough my flowers ye needs must die waste things bereft and fruitless creon thou alone art left their father now since both of us are gone who cared for them o oh, leave them not alone to wander masterless these thine own kin and beggared neither think of them such sin as ye all know in me but let their fate touch thee 
so young they are so desolate of all save thee true man give me thine hand and promise oedipus and creon clasp hands if your age could understand children full many counsels i could give but now i leave this one word pray to live as life may suffer you and find a road to travel easier than your father trod creon enough thy heart hath poured its tears now back into thine house repair oedipus i dread the house yet go i must creon fair season maketh all things fair oedipus one oath then give me and i go creon name it and i will answer thee oedipus to cast me from this land creon a gift not mine but god's thou askest me oedipus i am a thing of god abhorred creon the more then will he grant thy prayer oedipus thou givest thine oath creon i see no light and seeing not i may not swear oedipus then take me hence i care not creon go in peace and give these children o'er oedipus ah no take not away my daughters they are taken from him creon seek not to be master more did not thy masteries of old forsake thee when the end was near chorus ye citizens of thebes behold tis oedipus that passeth here who read the riddle word of death and mightiest stood of mortal men and fortune loved him and the folk that saw him turned and looked again lo he is fallen and around great storms in the outreaching sea therefore o man beware and look toward the end of things that be the last of sights the last of days and no man's life account as gain ere the full tale be finished and the darkness find him without pain oedipus is led into the house and the doors close on him end of part three Recording by Expatria in Bangor, Maine. End of Oedipus Rex by Sophocles. Translated by Gilbert Murray, 1866-1957. to